today we'll visit three seafood spots featuring mostly local, sustainable seafood. Seymour's with multiple locations around town, and Chamuska and Servo's, both on the Lower East Side. I'm Mike Colomeco, Industry Insider. I've been in the business my whole life, and I know what it takes to succeed. Each week we'll take you into real kitchens, filmed in real time. Backstage passes to a day in the life of chefs, restaurateurs, and their teams. The competition's fierce. Careers, life savings, and reputations hang in the balance. These are my people, and this is their passion. And that's what's next on Mike Colomeco's Real Food. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. Speed, Michael. Pleasure, man. It's been a while. Yes. We filmed with you, I don't know how many years ago, eight or ten, Meatball Shop. That was your sort of stepping out into the world of entrepreneurialism. How many Meatball Shops now? There's seven with an eighth on the way. You've also got Meatball Shop, tomato sauce, coast to coast, and Whole Foods. Yep. Crazy. I mean, this was like a dream. You had a business plan, and it's almost like you hit all the marks. Yes, yes. Now, Seymour's opened when? Because we're not doing the Meatball Shop, we're doing Seymour's. So Seymour's opened June 29th, 2015, so we're going on uh, our fourth year. Um, and uh, we've got six of these bad boys. So first dish is tuna poke? Tuna poke, yep. Yeah. Tuna's um, from? Barnegat Light, New Jersey. Um, really fresh, great. Uh, it's very hard to find tuna, in, uh, let alone sustainable, that's local. We're really lucky to, to uh, have this fish available to us. You seem to always think big. I mean, I never did as a chef. It's like, have a restaurant, make it work, I'm good to go. Like, one restaurant's cool. What was the... Like Seymour's, you always knew it was going to be kind of like a meatball shop with this expandability? Small business is a failure waiting to happen. <laughs> it's basically what it is. Volunteer says. slavery. Yeah, it's basically like, <laughs> hey, you get into small business, you just better, you know, walk around with your guns up. And so, not saying that you need to franchise because I don't franchise. Right. But if you build a business off of the franchise model, meaning you create a business that's replicable, uh, that has scalability, and then drop new ones to keep people on their toes and keep people excited. I'm adding a little bit of crispy shallots, sesame seed, and finish it off with some roasted chopped peanuts. Damn. You know and that's gonna taste good, right? And let's talk about crunch here. Some fried blue tortillas, all corn. It's the gluten-free option, which we love. Um, what do you think of that? Tamari soy sauce. Right, so no gluten in the soy. Yep. Scallion to top it off. Bingo. Tuna poke, Seymour style. I love seafood. I don't love to spend $150 every time I want to eat seafood. Growing up uh, in New York, there's an enormous amount of fish species around this island, around, around the state of New Local. York. Local yeah. species that don't exist on menus today, right? Like, I can't tell you the last time before Seymour's I saw Bluefish, porgy, blackfish, uh, you know, you see striped bass. You see blackfish, toe tog. Toe tog. Right. Uh, fluke, flounder. Yep, all uh, the bottom feeder. Sea robin. Yep. yep. Uh, ling cod. Like all the fish that I grew up catching, um, never saw on menus. Chef, what's this, mackerel? Boston mackerel, yep. Beautiful. And the seared shrimp, uh, avocado. Sounds like a plate of deliciousness. What's the last part here, chef? Uh, this, that's the sauce of matcha. That's the sauce. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a kick, so. So you warn people. A little bit of shaved radish and sesame seeds to finish. Also a dish that's been on the menu since day one, kale and avocado salad. This is really popular, um, especially with adding fish from any of our daily landings. 
So those are. This is I added uh, roasted sweet potatoes. Sort of look like. I'm just um, want to guess. A little uh, golden quinoa. A little bit of salt. Whole grain. Lemon. And now I'm adding uh, honey apple vinaigrette. And you're kind of doing that massaging version yeah. of the salad where it kind of you, beats it up a little bit. You have to with yeah. kale. Um, yeah. So in all the years you've been cooking, did you ever think like back in the day that kale would become the monster that it is today? Kale is a monster. It's like nuts. Uh, it's like the pretty boy of greens. And it went from being like back of the class dunce to like the it thing. Well, it's really high uh, in antioxidants. And I've been eating it all my a, life. It's delicious. I'm just like, when did it? It's just crazy. It's a, it's a great health option. Um, I eat kale almost every day. And then we are going to finish with sliced half avocado. And then some Granny Smith Granny apples. Granny Smith apples are just acidulated water to keep the color clean. Yeah, we use lim uh, lime juice. Um, it adds a really nice flavor. Um, as opposed to lemon, and finish with some toasted walnuts. That's what that is. And there you go. What's the protein in there? Is it skate? It's skate. I love skate. I wanted to put a highlight on the species of fish that are part of my hometown. Um, what I learned about those species of fish is that they're totally underutilized, there's an abundance of them, and they're inexpensive. Where's the fish? Like this a is a pollock. pollock. Yep. Really easy, smooth, um, light, flaky fish. And we've seasoned the fish with a little bit of salt. This is going in a beer batter. That's what I'm at my next question. It's a beer batter. Uh, the beer batter, uh, we have fresh yeast, um, a light Pilsner beer, and a little bit of flour, salt, and sparkling water. So it's really light. Like seltzer water. Yep. Gives it some lift. We'll let those fry up. Two corn tortillas. Uh, they're about five inches. We get these delivered fresh every day, and we can start to plate. So you have your tortillas, a little bit of our house-made guacamole. And what's in your guacamole? It's really minimal. What is it? It is very minimal. Uh, we have avocados, hopefully ripened, very hard and difficult this time of year, um, and jalapenos, lime juice, olive oil, and uh, a little bit of salt. Period. And cilantro. Okay. That's it. That's, uh, that's one of the best guacamoles. Uh, next, we're gonna marinate the kale with a little bit of lemon juice and salt. This is a mix of shredded kale and shredded red cabbage. And then that goes right on top of the guacamole. Nice, crispy pollock fish. And right on top of that kale and guacamole, you have your crispy fish. What's the sauce? This is a chipotle mayo. So we take chipotles in adobo um, and blend it with aioli. Just a nice drizzle right over top. Finish with shaved radish. And there you go, Seymour's crispy taco. I mean, you know that's going to put a smile on somebody. <laughs> what, what's, what's not to like about that, right? Absolutely not. So it's crispy, it's battered, it's fried, the fish is going to be juicy, flaky, white, delicious. All right, and a plate. So this is our house curry, a lot of garlic, a lot of lemongrass, lots of sour notes, uh, lime juice. And uh, these are mussels from Maine, uh, Harentine River, the wild mussels. They're pretty damn good. All right, Richard Musa Gustavo, thanks for having us in. Thank you. Uh, Welcome to the neighborhood, uh, Lower East Side, Virginia Street. That. You've got your 12 feet of storefront. Oh this my is God, it. this is it. <laughs> what an honor. Field of dreams. Oh my God. So talk to me. You have a funny background, because I've uh, like, yeah. been dealing with chefs all my life. That's all I've ever yeah. done. So, Talk about your story, because it is unlike any I've heard. West Coast uh, kid came here not for food. Not for food. Uh, didn't really figure that out till later. Uh, big old smack in the face after trying to figure that out and over slices of pizza. But yeah, came here for music. Um, I was DJing uh, professionally in LA. And that fizzled out 
uh, pretty quick. So I took a trip out to New York and loved it. Well, it's not to love. And, uh, you know, six months later, moved out here. No real plan. Nobody that I knew. So uh, give me a year, 90s. Uh, 2001, like three weeks before 9-11. Huh, welcome. Crazy, right? Um, all signs pointed me to let's just go home. Like, um, but it was very different after that. It was kind of really um, warm and friendly. Yeah, no, it's true. 9-11, it was really funny how New York just Surreal. came together. There was just eye contact and subways. It was like the city had to heal itself. Yeah. And civility suddenly became the kind, queen of the day, which kind of we strange. weren't known for. Kind of strange how all that happened. I was, I was kind of amazed to be here. I wasn't scared to go back. I wanted to stay. This is a live sea scallop from Provincetown. Like there's no restaurant experience and then suddenly you show yeah. up here, you sign a lease, yeah. give away half your life, personally guarantee everything, yeah. and decide I want to do this. Why? I always felt really strongly about sustainability and responsibly source seafood and of course butchery. All right, a little garnish. All right, it goes on top, obviously, of course. Beautiful, Chef. Thank you very much. I was doing a pop-up. A broker emailed me because he had some of my food at that dinner two months later. Said, I have a great space for your, for your uh, project, for what you're doing. Um, and he shot me the email, the address. I'm like, what is this, spam? But then I looked at the address. I'm like, I got to humor this. Saw the space called my business partner. She came over and saw it and she's like, let's do it. But you're using fun stuff. You're using like fish collars that aren't just, that's just not sustainability, that's like junk parts. For me, sometimes it's actually better than the actual filet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so like the cheeks, like people discovered, oh, cods have cheeks exactly. and they're delicious. Exactly. So why throw all that away? This is a pollen. And where, so there would have been the head. Exactly. There would have been the rest of the body. Exactly. This mm -hmm. is literally the jaw. In the old days, you'd make fish stock, basically fish for me. Sure. Or it goes to the trash can. And it goes, it's, most of the time, just goes in the trash. Correct. If you're a full fish market hunting fish, that's garbage. That's exactly right. So here it goes, run in the pan. How long is this going to cook? So this cooks about a good six minutes. Skin side down. Skin side down. All right. Do it turn. Right. Yeah, it looks good. Nice color on that. Yes, it is. Now we're going to put a little soy reduction. Which is just that only? It uh, has a little miso and honey as well. Uh, just a little bit, because this is going to be really salty. Just a little bit of lemon juice, and we're ready to roll. I mean, actually, the consistency of this is so much meatier yep. than the filet. Exactly. So much steakier, firmer, mm -hmm. denser. Bloody delicious. Highly sustainable. Nothing's getting thrown away, you know? I'm trying to get everything in. That's why you see it on the menu for eight bucks. All right? And it's delicious. It, exactly. You've never had a fish. I mean, it's like meaty and yeah. tender and spectacular. Yeah. And This is a combination of tilefish, Spanish mackerel. So oily with the white fish, I think gives Great combo of texture and flavor. All right, so what we're gonna do first is marinate it. And this is all lemon juice. Red onion, jicama, cilantro, mango, mandarin, scallions, radish. All right, here's the serrano pepper. Last but not least, avocado. All right. And now we get the fun part. This is my favorite. Yeah, it is. Texturally speaking, this is Absolutely. why we live as chefs. Absolutely. So we get our hands and stuff and play. You know? Because uh, especially when the fish is all hidden out under, then you start pulling it out, start mixing it all together. Talk about this, because this is really interesting. Where'd you get the idea for this? Because I had not heard of this before. All right, so uh, I went to Spain, and one of the things that I got from there was uh, uh, coriander oil. So 
uh, thinking I had that under my belt, I went home and tried to do it. And so this made with coriander seed. Coriander seed. Which are really interesting seeds. They look like peppercorns, exactly. a lot hollower. When you crack them, they have this wonderful, floral, beautiful. Beautiful. Really, in, if you've never cooked a coriander seed, you're really missing. Oh, of course. A note, a flavor, a, a whole thing. Absolutely. Uh, so you went to make it home and you burnt the hell out of the coriander seed. Combusted and went up in flame. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. Okay. That here here goes my kitchen. supposed to happen. Um, so, um, just, I didn't really uh, think too much about it. I'm like, I'm still gonna use this. So, so I added olive oil and a little salt to it. And it has an amazing burnt flavor. Um, so this could be the only restaurant right now in the city serving burnt coriander seed oil. Uh, I'm guessing. I'm, I'm in a lot of restaurants. I mean, you know probably more than I do, but... Yeah, I think this is it. I think we can... I'm, I'm going to go down on a limb on this one. I think this is the only restaurant right now serving this particular ingredient. Amazing. So, and here's my famous smoky chipotle salsa. Which you make. Yep. Mm. I mean, it's like, it hits all the points, right? It's acid, it's yep. fresh, it's yep. bright, it's shiny. You've got onion in there, you've got coriander in there. <coughs> You've got sweetness from the fruit, acid yep. from the other fruit. Mm -hmm. There's some heat. That's why I coughed, I think. <coughs> I'm coughing. There's some heat. Uh, it's a tangelo. Tangelo. We take sweet onions, we marinate them with muscatel vinegar, honey, and some more dried mint. We kind of are crazy for dried mint. Uh, then we grate horseradish all over the whole top, a little bit of sea salt. All right, lamb burger, caper aioli, slaw of fennel? Fennel, celery, and onion. Fennel, celery, onion. Lots of mint in there, too. Mint lamb. Yeah, mint lamb. White anchovies. Ocarones, cured in vinegar. I got clams for table eight, clams for table 12. Table 12. When we found this space, which was pies and, and pies, pies. Um, we were intrigued by the way they had laid it out, which was kind of to sh act a little bit like an old diner. It's right? what it looks like. Pies With, and pies was, a, yeah. I mean, they had baked goods here, but that was where they did some cooking and the, a big kitchen downstairs, but it looked like a diner. Yeah. Stools along the bar. Exactly. This block, this little area is just really neat right now. The energy down here is crazy. It still feels like a neighborhood, and it's very, it's still a very diverse, right. business-owned neighborhood. Like, right. you have, not just that the people that live here, but the businesses, I mean, it's Malaysian beef jerky and the skate shop. And so for us, you know, for Nick, Lee and I, and Aaron, like, we had always kind of had this seafood counter um, sort of idea, and a lot of that was inspired by traveling on the coast of Portugal and Spain. The space really dictated this concept of having a seafood counter where wine plays a huge role. Uh, it's some yogurt, uh, and then we have some mackerel that has been cooked to medium, skin side down, so it gets nice and crispy. And then we take that and we marinate it with um, a citrus vinaigrette, lots of sweet onions, lots of zest in there, some really good olive oil. And then we just build like a nice arugula salad on top with this beautiful organic arugula that we get from home state. All right, we're talking about wines here earlier, so we can't miss this point. You see this wine? Canary Island, so it's an island wine. David Bowler's the importer. He specializes in a lot of these wines. It's a white wine made from three indigenous grapes from the Canary Islands. I'm not going to name them because I don't know them. But skin contact, that's why it's kind of orange-ish. It's just a super wine, super grippy. Super delicious wine, super fruit friendly. We plowed through this bottle. There's something really unique and interesting about them, especially from these more coastal regions or volcanic regions, and the wines are kind of salty, and they go so good with seafood, and um, just didn't feel like there was a place to really have that, like kind of high quality seafood, but casual, and with these real, not only flavors of Spain and Portugal, but also kind of like a cooking style. Bosque cider is going to deglaze this. We use it to deglaze lots of pans and it's super tasty. 
of like cooking something and then letting it sit and marinate for a while and working with conservas or making our own conservas. And, and I think all of that in wine is so simple and everyday there and we just kind of wanted to bring a little bit of that inspiration here. Tomato sauce, and ideally if we've done all of our work, it's all gonna come together nice and seasoned. We want to make food that we want to eat that makes us feel good, like here and here, as well as like feel good. Some really nice olives. We want to eat fatty fish, we want to eat small fish, we want to eat um, sardines, we want to eat Boston mackerel, which is really like the East Coast sardine. I usually use a little bit of that brine too. Ah. And then we're gonna baste the beautiful seasoned monkfish in this liquid. Monkfish, another bycatch bi product that we're using throughout the whole winter. Um, as you found out yesterday, it's like the best fried fish ever. Man, you can see, I mean, this is just soul food, basically. Seafood soul food. Yeah. And what was the concept? How did you come to this? Because I know that Niles had done that sort of canned fish made in the lane bit. I remember right. reading about that thing and that's fascinating because we filmed at a place in, in Lisbon that was exactly that concept. Yeah. Serving vino verde and just delicious European varieties of right. tin fish. The, I mean, the, the whole idea of this restaurant um, was to make food that reminds us of being on vacation there. We got clams. And we have vino verde. Aaron took a trip over to a lot of our favorite haunts in Portugal and Spain to kind of get a good feel for that before we opened. And then they're releasing that gorgeous salty clam broth into the Absolutely. wine. Absolutely. We're gonna add parsley. If you come here, most of what you'll see me doing is doing this, and I'm emulsing buying olive oil into the clams, or into the liquid. This is the one dish that I could cook every night now for a year and a half, and I feel pretty uh, okay about it. Doesn't get tired. Not getting bored. Since then, a lot of us and a lot of the folks in the kitchen have been going back there and just getting a lot of inspiration from that area so or Portugal's from books amazing. from there. And, really, yeah. for Americans, it's off the beaten path. I don't know why. It's got an amazing coastline. It's inexpensive. Lisbon is an amazingly, it reminds me of San Francisco. This beautiful, stuff hilly, the near the ocean yeah. stuff on this. Dude, food's great. You go 45 minutes out of the way and you're in Cascais surfing. It's like, yeah. really, like, what's there not to like about this place? It's like amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Super awesome. Head on, super Beautiful. fresh. Beautiful. These have to be super fresh because the fish rots from the head down, shellfish especially. So if this isn't fresh, this is gone. Super beautiful. We have the bodies, which we have butterflied, uh, which we're gonna cook on the plancha. And then we have the heads, which we're gonna fry, and they'll be really crispy and you can eat the whole thing. We are going to eat the whole thing. <laughs> the heads get dredged um, in a mix of 70% rice flour, 30% cornstarch. It's a pretty simple thing. Let them swim, five minutes. A little of that same olive oil for cooking. And we butterfly these and break their backs so they can lay flat. They're gonna pop up a little bit, but then we're gonna put a weight on top of them. The sauce is really simple, like everything here. It's onions, a little bit of really, really tasty tomato paste that you could just put on bread and eat. It's really good. Um, garlic, lemon peels, orange peels, bay leaf, and wine. And the heads. Heads, and water. there you go and water. There's so much flavor when you cook those shells down. Olive oil. We're kind of getting a theme going here with the flavor profiles. Um, we're gonna then add crunchy sea salt from Sicily, a little bit of Urfa Bieber, and Aleppo pepper that we call Urfepo. <laughs> Back to the theme, squeeze the lemon over the whole thing. We just lighten it up, polish it up. There you go. I'm gonna pull those, those shrimp heads, we'll Five put minutes. them up together. Tasty salt. And we're gonna simply plate these. It's basically a chip. Gets a um, good amount of paprika all over it. All right, these are impossible to describe how good they are. There's so much flavor in these shells, it's crazy. And even after five minutes, there's still like a creaminess to them. Yeah, absolutely. Which, like, I would have thought they'd be. So, somehow, somehow everything inside is intact. Right? No explanation, however it works, and it's really tasty. And these guys, let's see, let's do an experiment. Are these shells edible or not? Mm. Very loosely, we were just like, we would like to make a Spanish Portuguese seafood counter. And it's kind of, it's evolved. Um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily call it a seafood counter. I guess they call it like a little bit more of a restaurant, but 
you know, we want. You do have so the, the meat proteins. You have a lamb burger. Yeah. And you have chicken. Yeah. And that's it, though. Is there any of the meat that I missed? That's it. I mean, every once in a while, we've like used a little bit of beef for tartare. We, every that's once right, in a while, we've done like a pork thing. I mean, the fact of the matter is, like, seafood is the star of the show. Right. Seafood and vegetables. Um, and I think like chicken and chicken and lamb work really well with seafood. I mean, you, that's kind of what you see in Mediterranean cuisine. All right, so this is the chicken and then all the juice that it rests in. Wow. Yeah. French fries. Well, if you didn't order seafood, that would not be a bad second choice, would it? People really like come here for the seafood. Um, we could put beautiful steaks on the menu and, I don't and, think that's and the, people don't really go for it. Yeah. You know, people are coming here like because they want fresh seafood. Um, and they want it like cooked with lots of olive oil, lemon, and garlic, simply. Um, and that's why they come here. What was that last bit? Nuts? Uh, toasted almonds. Toasted almonds. And some olive oil. We finish everything with olive oil. Yeah, I've noticed. It's an obsession. I like. Why not? Thanks for having us in, Chef. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home.